Welcome. So what I want to do in this video is show you how to graph exponential functions. And when graphing exponential functions, it's important to kind of know, talk about our, at least our parent graph, or just kind of the most general form of the graph, and then how we're going to use transformations to graph different exponential um, graphs. So the basic form of an exponential graph, and for this example, we're going to be talking about either growth or decay. And it's going to depend on if it's growth or decay is really going to be depending on the value of our b. If b is larger than 1, then our graph is going to be a growth graph. And if b is less than 1 but greater than 0, we're going to have what we call a decay graph. All right? And that's going to be a little bit different. And I'll, I'll provide both. both parent graphs for you, just so you can kind of get an idea of what's going through to look like, and then we'll, how we're going to use um, a graph to be able to determine. Um, and I have a lot of different examples. I have a whole playlist for growth and of decay. So the main important thing is let's go, let's go and talk about a growth graph. So a growth graph, the reason why we talk about growth is from going from left to right, the graph increases and is what we say is you know growing. Now there's a couple important points in the y equals b to the x when it's a growth graph. As it's growth, we our y-intercept is going to be at 0, comma 1. And then the next point over at 1 is going to be at the point 1, comma b. All right. Now, when talking about the asymptote, now this is for both our growth and a decay graph. We're going to have a domain from negative infinity to infinity. As you can see, the x values are increasing um, infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. Our range is only from 0 to infinity, meaning that when we're talking about our output value, it's never going to be um, negative as long as that b, as long as we're talking about a decay or growth, it's never going to be negative. And our asymptote where the graph is going to approach is going to be at y equals 0. Now let's go and take a look at the decay graph. And the decay graph is going to be, have some of the same exact same points, where this is going to be 1, 0. But then, instead of, instead of the graph going from left to right increasing, it's actually going to go left to right decreasing. Because remember, this point is less than 1. So if you say at, over here is 1, and then over here at 1, it's going to still be 1 comma b. But remember, it's going to be less than 1 because for it to be decayed, b has to be less than 1 but greater than 0. So that's why this graph takes the form here. And that is what we call a decay graph. All right. So when graphing, you know, if you have a graph that's in one of these general forms, the best method that I like to use is just, um, that's 0 comma 1, is the best method I like to use when talking about these is just use a table of values. You know, Pick a table of values to plug in um, for x, and then you go and find y. And the best table of values, you know, when I'm talking about graphing, I usually just want my students to be able to determine at least two points so they can find, find the shape of the graph. And usually the best two points that I choose are going to be x and 0. Because and really, you can either determine these kind of two points. Now let's go and talk about some transformations. And a lot of times when we're going to get graphing exponential, they're not just going to be in a simple uh, decay or growth format, but they are going to have some transformations with them. So we have a to the b raised to the x minus h plus k. So when we're talking about a function or you know, equation in this standpoint that has some transformations into it, we need to remember exactly what each transformation is going to represent. So a is, again, still going to represent a kind of a dilation um, within the graph. And that's going to kind of tell us you know, how much more the graph is going to increase or decrease. And also, a is going to help us determine if it is negative, then our um, graph is going to reflect the, the x-axis. So a is going to tell us if there's a reflection and a dilation. All right, really kind of a stretching or a compressing of the graph. Um, the next one is we can deal with is the h. And remember, h, determine our value of our h, h is really going to determine uh, if our graph is going to be shifting left or right. And remember, it's written as x opposite of h. You can try and put these in parentheses as it's inside the function, so it's going to be opposite. So h is going to represent a shift horizontally. And that's just going to be shifting the graph left to right. And remember, the opposite. And then k is going to represent a shift vertically. 
And remember, the vertical shift is going to tell you, you know, if you're going to be shifting your graph up or down. And the main important thing is h is inside of our function, and k is going to be outside of our function. Now, the next thing is we can also have a negative x inside of there. All right? And when we have a negative x, what that does is you know, that talks about that's a reflection of the y-axis. But what you notice is the growth and decay are reflections of the y-axis. And we're going to get into that a little bit more, a um, little bit more into this. But as of for right now, when we have a negative x and it's a decay problem, what that's going to show us is really, rather than saying it's a reflection, we can just change it over as talking as it as a decay problem. So I'll get to a little bit more of that once we get into uh, those examples of each. But if I have a graph of y equals a to the b, um, let's just say x minus h plus k, how am I going to graph that? Well, what I like to do first is I like to create two graphs. And the first graph, what I like to do is what I call the parent graph. And when graphing the parent graph, if I had a function, and let's say you know, I had real numbers in for a, h, and k, what I'm going to do is only graph the y equals a b to the x. I'm not going to take any reflections of over the y-axis. I'm not going to do any shifting left or right. I'm just going to graph the parent graph. And when I graph that, the way that I'm going to graph it is just using a table. I'm just going to pick points for x and y. And again, I only require two points out of my students. And if you're going to use more points, you can, obviously, if that's something you need. And you, or you could also just use a graphing, calcu gra graphing calculator to help you out as well. But I'm going to choose my two points, which really are going to represent these kind of two points that I've already graphed on the parent function. So they're usually fairly simple to go ahead and plot. So I'll plot my two points. And then what I do is I apply my transformations. So I take my parent graph, all right? And the reason why I like to include the a in there as well, because sometimes the a is going to affect what the y-intercept is. Because not always is your y-intercept going to be 0, 1 if you have a value for a. And then what I do is I just take my transformations. So if this graph need to be reflected about the x-axis, I then will take the parent graph and reflect over the x-axis. If it needs to shift two units to the right and one unit down, then I do that. And then I redraw it on my final graph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just a brief little explanation on how to graph exponential equations. Thanks.